Welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. We got a really cool one for you today. Look at this truck behind us, the Lightning Bolt, right? The Lightning yeah, Bolt? Yeah, Lightning Bolt. Which is a Ranger with a Lightning engine. It's a Ford prototype. This is Dave Dempster, it's his creation. Ford did this back in the day. They built the Super Stallion, the 6.1 uh, CJ. They built all kinds of cool prototype vehicles that some of them made it into production, some of them didn't, but this one still exists. Dave, we're gonna talk about this thing. It's purple, it's out there, it's fast. Yes. What inspired you to build the Lightning Bolt? Well, a lot of our prototypes have been kind of dated. You know, we had the Boss, like you mentioned, the Stallion, the 6-1. And I, I, pro I proposed this to John Coletti. I said, hey, I'd like to build a new kind of a show showpiece. Right. And, you know, basically uh, kind, uh, kind of get maybe a little magazine coverage and, you know, that, that type of thing. A right. Li a little eye candy. And I told him what I you know, what I had planned, and the first thing he said is, "Get out of my office." <laughs> I'm not shocked to hear that. Yeah, it, but in typical John Coletti fashion, he says, "Put down on paper, give me a business case, and uh, we'll think about it." Well, he thought about it, and lo and behold, he gave me the green light. Testo North America is the world's largest manufacturer of handheld test and measurement instrumentation and software for HVAC, food safety pharma compliance, and combustion analysis. And you can check out Testo at testo.com. So, but what gave you the inspiration? Just the lightweight of the truck? Yeah, absolutely. I thought, how about all that power in a lighter, smaller version? And I knew traction was going to be an issue. And, and, and honestly, I didn't spend a lot of time dialing that part of the truck <laughs> in. But we did a lot of great burnouts. A lot of journalists drove the truck. We got a lot of great magazine coverage. And, uh, you know, it, it just became a reality. And uh, it, I, I'm just happy that it's still around. What year was that? 2003. 2003. It was right about the time when we were launching the um, Terminator. So, you know, I was, I was doing Terminator, but I was kind of doing this on the side. So I'm trying to think of questions that you guys would want to hear the answers to. So you get the idea in your head, you get the approval from Coletti. How do you actually get the nut and bolts to start to go together? Who does that work? Well, part of it was me. You know, I contacted the plant, and I said, do you guys have any old regular cab, four-cylinder? I, I said, I don't care what it is. It's just got to be a regular cab. Right. And uh, they said, yeah, we got a couple laying around here. And I said, fine, send it up. This was a black 2-3 manual Ranger, as okay. basic as you could get. And uh, it was a perfect canvas for us to start on. So, yeah, we, we took it, and we started from the bottom up. Man. So 5-liter Ranger swaps have been around for quite some time. That's a relatively common hot rod deal. But to put a lightning motor now, remember Muscle Mustangs, we put one of these motors in a Fox body. Yep. But this probably does just as good a burnout. So it's actually a pretty heavy engine. Oh, it is. It is. And I, I mean, when, when you're going from something that small to something that large, right. obviously a lot of things have to change. Yep. We went with the stock intake on top of the blower, and we were unable to fit it under the hood. We actually had on our car, um, which was Project Frightening, if you guys remember that, <laughs> the top part of the blower and the throttle body came through the hood. But the coolest part was that from the driver's seat, you could see the throttle linkage move. Yeah. So it was kind of like you were driving like a funny car or an altered that had the injector hat because you could see the throttle actuate. So One of the caveats of this truck was we wanted to be able to keep the stock hood. We didn't want any scoops or you know any, anything goofy on there. Right. So that was a big task in itself. We had to lower that whole powertrain almost three inches into the engine bay. So that's kind of where things started. Is that kind of to keep it low profile on the street? Obviously, you couldn't, even if it went to production, you couldn't sell a vehicle with the engine sticking through the hood. Correct, correct. I mean, it's, it was for aesthetic purposes, but we wanted to get a lower CG on the vehicle and get it, you know, down to the ground a little bit. Right. All right, well, let's take a look. All right. Dave, any idea what the truck weighs? Uh... Honestly, I don't remember. Oh man, Thomas, look at this. I got my man Thomas on camera today. So it does have a different inlet, something non-lightning yeah. non standard, but the stock lightning would have come up 
over this way and the throttle body would have sat here. Yep, yep. So Dave, looking at it, it is amazing how low the blower sits and how low the engine sits. What were some of the major challenges? Because I see you still have power brakes and everything. Yeah, we wanted to keep all the creature comforts, just power steering, power brakes. And one thing most people would never notice is the HVAC system on this. Huh. That is the rear HVAC system out of an Econoline van. Oh, wow. Now the production Ranger HVAC came out to about here. So needless to say, that had to go. Right. But we wanted to keep everything functional. Well, I see you got some custom headers on it because that was Yeah, not... those were all hand built. Yep. Uh, we had some incredible fabrication guys working with us on this project. And uh, whenever there was a challenge, we just got together and put our heads together and, uh, you know, we figured it out. Yeah, I see even how you tuck the computer yep. into the cowling. That's really sharp. And then who fabricated this elaborate intake system? Because this was probably the biggest change to the engine, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, we, you know, we needed to be able to keep this low and package the entire induction system underneath the hood. Now, it, the, even the hood itself. People, oh, wow. Look at that. People always look at this hood and they think that they look at this and they say, that's cool. That's very cool. And I'm like, that's all production. We Is did that really? We did have to trim this in the rear right. for clearance right here. But typically you don't see this because there's a pad on there. Right. So is that designed by Titleist? Because it kind of looks like a golf ball. <laughs> it, it does, kind of. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, and it, and it, it just, it, you know, when you open the hood, it, it kind of has a cool factor to it. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. And it definitely does not look like, I've never seen a Ford hood look like that. Nope. So, uh, it's a standard 4R100 transmission that the Lightning use. Okay. Right? So typically... Uh, on that, on that actual, on the transmission, we didn't have to really modify anything other than a little bit of the shift linkage for okay. clearance and stuff, because, you know, we had to set this back, and we tried to make it look like it was made there. Right. Right. What the things that you don't see is how it's lowered two and a half to three inches. It's moved back about two inches. Right. So the, you know, the tunnel was modified because the the tra that transmission is massive. Yeah, even when we see cars here at the show or at any show where they have an engine swap done, mostly new engine into old car, I love when the builder goes out of their way to make it look like as if Ford would have built it that way. Yeah. With black hosing and proper clamps and just really clean OE style installation. I love that. Yeah, and I, I, I believe the, one of the selling points of the whole project was I think John, and, and it might be a little tongue-in-cheek, but John would say, well, we got to figure out how to do this and see if it's production feasible. Okay. And, and that's typically how we start these things. Could we do this in production? We probably could have, but it would have been ridiculously expensive. Okay, just because of the mods? Yes. Because this truck was never designed yeah. to have a V8? No. I mean... And the, and the frame itself on this truck, I mean, we had to totally re-engineer the frame on it. Oh, that gets really... You know, with all okay. this torque, I mean, it would have just twisted. <laughs> so every, everything, you know, underneath, uh, the frame uh, the frame rails were all boxed. Everything was tied together. Right. Um, there are so many subtle things on this truck that you don't see. Like, you don't see a fuel tank door because we took that off. We mounted a fuel cell underneath. So you have to go into the into the bed area to put fuel in the truck right but you know people look at it and they think oh it's a, it's a cool ranger and most people when the hood's closed they think it's a five liter right is it still a uh a leaf spring truck in the back it is it and is is it a nine inch or an eight eight no no it's it's a nine and three quarter oh wow it, it's the or excuse me nine and a quarter it's a standard lightning axle okay that we narrowed roughly i want to if i think it was pretty close to 13 inches we narrowed it oh my god now, uh, let's walk around this side. Absolutely. This, it's such a neat little truck. And it's got the lightning wheels. It's got yep. the kind of go with the bolt. So you're kind of sticking with the lightning theme. Yep. Step side, which, you know, these are small trucks yep. sitting down. But I noticed back here, you got a 345-inch tire. Yeah. We had to widen the rear wheels. Okay. Uh, I think we widened those to about 12 and a half inches. Right. And the front, we actually narrowed. For, okay. for clearance and we had to put rack stops on the steering rack just you know so it didn't go too far and didn't rub right uh like i said th this was not set up for autocross no just you ripping. know yeah it was just 
stoplight Grand Prix, basically. Now, remember the splash trucks? Yeah. A lot of them were purple, too. So does anybody ever mistake it for a splash? No, no. When we painted this truck, uh, we, we looked at several options. We kind of started out with yellow, and it was like, eh, and, then, <laughs> and then this is actually sonic blue. This is uh, the same color they use on the SVT uh, that's, Focus. That's my favorite 03 Cobra yep. color. And uh, on the Cobra. Right. And, uh, you know, just, just we wanted something that was cool, but not too gaudy or over the top. You right. know, and, th and that was John Coletti's mantra. You know, it had to be functional. It, it, it was not showy. It, right. it, it just, you know, it had to be nice. So, so had you guys been able to put this package together reasonably, affordably, like go down the assembly line, is this something that could have made it into production? Realistically, I'm going to say no. You know, it was, it was just, there was too much. And, and for the limited amount of these we would have built. Right. Having narrowed axles, tooling up wider wheels, uh, et cetera, et cetera, it, it would have just, it would have been unfeasible. I got you. Let's take a peek on the inside. What did you guys do to the inside to give it that lightning touch? Well, uh, we, we had reached out to uh, a couple of uh, sponsors and, and uh, aftermarket companies. We got a hold of cat skins. Right. And we wanted to do something cool with the seats because the Ranger seats are kind of and eh, kind of pl kind of plain. Right. So we they they, they custom made these uh, leather seats for us, and we had them stitched lightning bolt uh, into the uh, into the seat backs. And again, it's just subtle. Uh, the knobs on the dash, uh, custom pieces, but again, very subtle. And kind of keeping with the theme. Did it have a horsepower rating? Uh, it was. A, this was a. Uh, we, I don't think we ever dynoed the truck. Uh, it was a standard uh, 380 horsepower okay. lightning motor, and uh, it might be a little more with the calibration and the tuning we did. But right. honestly, we never put it on the dyno. And you got the headers on there. Yeah. So. Yep. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna guesstimate it's somewhere around 400. Right, which is plenty. Plus, with that instant. Nasty oh, yeah. torque of that absolutely little eaten uh, supercharger. Yep. And then this thing would only be like a Whipple or something away from oh yeah being absolutely mind blowing for horsepower. Yep. But the, you know the issue with that uh, and the big horsepower is trying to get the trying to get it planted. Right. You know um, the exhaust system on this is it, the, the nice thing. Another subtle touch that we did on this the exhaust system. If you look at it from the rear, you can't see it. There's no headers hanging down. There's oh, no wow. mufflers. Everything's tucked up between the frame rails. Wanted to be very, uh, very clean aesthetically. Uh, I, I, t I contacted a company in Ohio, and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. They custom made that bed cover for us. Nice. You know, nice low. Uh, you know, just again, just simple. How does it ride? It's not bad. It's not bad. When we introduced the 03 Cobra at the press, uh, the press showing in uh, Las Vegas right. at the Speedway, we had this truck out there, and all the journalists, and including your buddy uh, Jim Camposano, right. uh, they all drove the truck, and, and everybody loved it. And uh, this thing ran up and down Las Vegas Strip probably 50 times that day. Wow. And, er and everybody just kept hammering it and having a good time. Have you ever seen anybody uh, replicate it? You ever seen I've another? Had a I had a couple people at the time when I was still working contact me and they wanted, you know, some details and I gave them information that I could. Uh, you know, some of the stuff we did was proprietary, but uh, I, you know, and I, you know, hot rodders, they figure this stuff out. Oh, no right? doubt. No doubt. I mean, that's, that's what, that's the industry we're in. So uh, I, I don't know that it's ever been done, but I'm sure it probably has. Right. Well, I absolutely love it. And uh, I think we got to hear this thing run. Oh, no problem. Let's check it out. I'm good with that. Oh, yeah. If you shut your eyes, it's a lightning. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a little rumbly, but it's not obnoxious. Nah, not at all. I mean, unless you're really leaning into the loud pedal, and then it can be a little loud. Right. I absolutely love it. I've, I've been, 
you know, a fan of this truck. Obviously, being a magazine guy, I got to see it back in the day, and it's cool that it still even exists. Because well, a lot of this stuff uh, doesn't exist anymore. It, it's nice to be able to work with suppliers. Like Bilstein had to cut. We had the issue we had on one of the issues that we had was the shocks. We right. we we needed something that would extend to a certain length and compress, and they had to custom custom make uh, all the struts and the dampers for this thing. Right. Well, it's got to be when you take on a challenge like building a vehicle like this, you know and. Are there any, like you said, you're trying to keep it where it could go into production, but you can't go like full custom where you're no. tubbing the rear out. And, exactly. Right? You still got to keep it somewhat um, as if Ford might build this for the future. Yeah. And that's harder to do sometimes than just being able to do your own thing. Well, yeah. And I mean, if you've got an open checkbook and you, you know, you're, you're going to, you can go with all the best stuff. And like you said, you know, all the modifications, but that's not production feasible. It's just not. Right. Everybody thinks, oh, it's the Blue Oval, Ford Motor Company. You can do whatever you want. But you guys did have tight budgets for stuff Ab like this. Absolutely. You know, and when I put this together, it's safe to say that I ran over what I initially projected with John. Right. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the, the truck, it, it did what it was designed to do. It, it got us some good exposure. And, you know, as Clay used to always say, our job is to polish the oval. And, right. and that's what we tried to do on everything that we did. Man, that's awesome. Well, Dave, thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're welcome, Evan. Always great to see you. You as well. And uh, we appreciate everybody checking out the Rev and Evan channel. Thank you. And the, the cameraman, thank you. My man Tom is on the case today. All right.